Well, in typical British fashion, it is raining outside, been raining non-stop. This does not look like it is going to clear up anytime soon. Safe to say I am not venturing outside today, so what better opportunity than to sort out my DJ bag, give it a nice tidy up, and I'm going to show you everything that I take to each and every DJ gig. Let's get into it. Right, so I'm literally just kneeling on my lounge floor. I've got a little table here. You can't see it in the frame, but it's here with all the, the products on. So we're gonna go through everything. Also, I'm not being paid to say any of this. I'm not endorsed, sponsored, all of that kind of stuff by any of the brands that I take to any of my DJ gigs. Um, if you do want to know more, just hit me up in the comments. I will happily tell you some more if you've got any questions. But it's an honest review. I can say whatever I like because, as I say, none of these brands are paying me. These are This is stuff that I buy out of my own money. So let's talk about the bag itself first and foremost. It's by a company called UDG or Ultimate DJ Gear. It is a premium brand. You will pay a little bit more for their products. And I can't lie, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with UDG. I love the design of their products. It literally has everything a DJ needs. This is the Creator Slim backpack, I believe it's called, by UDG. It's quite cool because it's like a, a quite a sleek black design on the outside. And then inside, it's bright orange, which is quite cool. Now, I mentioned I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with UDG. I think their products are really, really well designed. This, this bag has got so many different pockets of diff and different sizes and different sort of sections within it. And that is everything that a DJ will need for their DJ gigs. And that, that design is brilliant. My issue with UDG is the price and the quality. UDG bags, for some reason, never stay looking new for very long. I've been DJing in clubs now for like 18 years, showing my age, and DJing in generally for about 23, 24 years. And so for about 20 years now, anyways, I'm going on, I've used UDG products. I have probably gone through about 10 of their bags because I don't know what it is. like, And I don't think I'm that heavy handed, but... I always find that like the stitching on the, like here goes or like the lining comes undone or something happens, which means that I have to end up buying a new bag, which is not the best considering you pay a, a premium price for their products. By the way, sorry, it's really tipping it down with rain out there. So sorry if that's coming through on the mic. You could be saying to me like, why don't you just go for another DJ manufacturer backpack or just pick another bag? And for a time, I did actually use a cheaper bag, but I just felt that like, I know stuff got lost in it and it just didn't end up working out. So I've always reverted back to UDG. There are other premium like DJ bag manufacturers on the market like Magma, for example. But for me, UDG always seemed the best in, their ter in terms of their like design. Anyways, that's the bag. Now let's look at what's inside. First up, very importantly, I've got an Apple AirTag. I'm not gonna show you where I put that in my bag, but I've got a lot of expensive stuff in my bag that I take with me, including my laptop. So my bag is trackable at all times via an AirTag that connects to my phone. Nothing more needs to be said about that. That's hidden somewhere in my DJ bag. Next up then, we've got a couple of XLR cables. Um, I'm not gonna focus too much on the boring stuff like cables, but basically this is for connecting up my DJ microphone. And the reason why I've got two, I've got one that's XLR to XLR. So you can see that for plugging in the mic. And then I've got one XLR to jack lead, depending on the mixer that I'm using. Um, basically, I just always carry two. Other cables that I take, and as I say, I'm trying not to focus too much on cables because they are boring. I've got a spare uh, power cable. Now, in most of the venues that I work, all of the equipment is already there. It's already installed. This is really just a spare in case like one of the venues ones fails, breaks, or for some reason isn't there. I've always ever sort of found that carrying one is absolutely fine. As I say, if you are taking your own controller or taking more equipment to your gigs, then I'd probably recommend taking more cables. 
but for me, like everything should be set up and ready to go. This is just kind of like for emergency situations. I always carry one spare RCA cable. I used to carry more of these, by the way, but for some reason I've got one at the moment. Probably should take a pair with me. I mean, back in the days of Serato Scratch Live boxes, you used to have to have like four of these. Uh, but I just, I've got one at the minute. I should probably take two, but yeah, I've got RCA cable just in case, again, one in the venue fails. And then because I use record box in export mode, I always take with me ethernet cables. This is the way that I hook up my laptop into um, the CDJs. And because I'm not linking from one CDJ into the other, I'm linking into an ethernet hub, which we'll get onto in a minute. I have to have individual ethernet cables for each of the decks and then one for the laptop. So I've always got two ethernet cables. Usually I have three, so one spare. And then I've got an extra ethernet cable uh, with this, um, this uh, dongle converter, what do you call this? Adapter, that's the word, for connecting into the, uh, the MacBook Pro. Because obviously we don't have ethernet in MacBooks, they love USB-C. So uh, that just goes onto my ethernet cable. And that is how I hook up my laptop. That is cables and all the boring stuff out the way. Well, just quickly on adapters as well, I always carry a spare ethernet to USB-C um, adapter, just in case, again, one fails. Having spares, as you can kind of tell, is kind of like my thing. I would say having spare stuff just, I don't know, it gives me that peace of mind anyway. Next up then, we have got the ethernet switch that I take along to every gig. Some of my uh, venues that I work in actually have one of these, but basically this just links all of the CDJs together um, and facilitates me putting the laptop in as well. So I can DJ on export mode in record box. Really, really cheap this is. This is just one by a company called Netgear. I don't know if that's coming up on the camera there, but effectively it's about 20 pounds or $20 uh, plug in and play and it comes with a, the power adapter as well. So not that exciting, but absolutely critical for me to work. Moving on then to the bigger items in my bag is my laptop stand. This one here is by a company called Nova Pro and it comes in this lovely little carry bag as well, which is good. This is quite a heavy laptop stand and probably the heaviest item in my DJ bag. It's made of like solid steel, I think. It is a little bit more pricey than some other laptop stands that you can get on the market. But what I love about it is the fact that it's completely foldable. So if I just fold it over like this, you can see there it's got a really compact footprint so it can just slide into the bag nicely. It sets up in seconds. And it's really, really good for just elevating your laptop, particularly useful in two different scenarios. Number one, if the DJ riser is quite low, it just brings the laptop up. This is height adjustable as well. Um, you just sort of twist it there and you can sort of raise the, the height up and down. But basically, um, if the DJ booth is quite low and you just wanna bring your laptop up to eye level, this is when you would use this, but also, it's really great for compact or tight DJ booths because what you can effectively do is slide these legs underneath the mixer or the CDJ or an element of your controller and then you've got your laptop basically above the rest of the equipment. So it's a real good space saver as well. I would thoroughly recommend you getting a laptop stand if you are DJing with a laptop. I'm not a massive fan of having it underneath the mixer to be honest because people then can't see your, your face. I don't like hiding behind a laptop screen because people just think you're looking at emails, <laughs> potentially. But um, I always have it off to the side and then it's out of the way. But yeah, that is my laptop stand. I think I've done a review video on the Nova Pro laptop stand. If I have, and it is on the channel, then I'll, I'll link it down below if you want to know more about that. Moving on then to some other little accessories. I have some USB sticks. Um, I put music on here. Uh, I usually DJ off my laptop because I'm DJing for like three, four hours, maybe even five hours at a time. So for me, using the laptop is great to have the search with the keyboard. But if I was DJing for an hour or two, I would just DJ off of USB. Nothing special. These are just SanDisk ones, 128 gigabytes, USB 3.0 for faster transfer, uh, file transfer speeds there. But I've got a few of them as you can see here. But yeah, SanDisk ones, just buy those on Amazon and you are good to go. Um, last few items then, I've got earplugs. 
I need to be a bit more disciplined in using them, I can't lie. These are the ones that are molded to my ears and reduce everything. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but yeah, they reduce everything by like 15 or so decibels, but supposed to be able to hear everything at the sort of the same, you know, the same clarity and, and quality, just 15 decibels quieter. I can't lie, I don't really use them. I really should. DJs, you should protect your hearing. Final notable items are my headphones, my laptop, and also as well, my microphone. So the microphone I carry is a Shure SM58 that as you can see, has seen better days. This has been absolutely battered over the years. I think this is a bomb-proof microphone. Um, it's so good, it's served me so well over the years, it's so reliable, a real workhorse, good quality, doesn't feed back too much. I have paid a little bit extra to have the version with the switch. So I would recommend if you are looking at buying a microphone, have a look at the version with the switch because then you don't have to switch it on and off on the mixer. So, and that comes in a little carry case if you buy one, which is cool. Headphones, again, in a little carry pouch. I have the Sennheiser HD 25s. In my opinion, the best DJ headphones out there. I know some people love Pioneer and I know some people love V-Moder and other headphone brands or even in-ear monitors. But for me, I always go back to the, the Sennheiser HD 25s. They have always been really reliable for me. Now, what I love about them is they're not too bassy. They're not too, like, big on the high frequencies. They are just a really flat sound, which is perfect for me when I am monitoring. Because, say, for example, if I'm mixing drum and bass, I actually mix off the hi-hat, not the kick drum. And sometimes with house music, if it's got a lot more percussive elements, I won't mix off the kick drum. I mix on different elements of the track. And the HG25s for me are just great with all of the details. Now, some people prefer the sound of Pioneer headphones and that is absolutely fine, or V-Moda headphones. I always find the ones with the bigger cans, um, you know, the, the, the cups that go over your ears, I find them too bassy. And I've tried mixing on Pioneer headphones, but I just can't get on with them. I almost feel a bit like, they're a bit like rumbly in your ear because it's so bassy. That doesn't mean they have a bad quality sound, it's just not the sound that I like. So I always come back to the Sennheiser HD 25s. And then finally, the laptop that I take to every gig is my trusty M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch. This is probably coming up to about three years old now, um, but basically I just find it to work. I, I know some people prefer Windows and some people don't like Apple, and that's absolutely fine. There are so many good laptop options out there. This is just the base model M1 MacBook Pro. The only thing I have done is upgraded the storage to one terabyte hard drive so I can store all of my music locally. That's the only thing that I have done. In my opinion, laptops are getting to a point now where you could probably have, especially in Apple anyway, you could probably have the base model of any of them and it will do absolutely fine for DJing. Now, if you're doing like heavy 4K video editing, then you are probably gonna need to upgrade the processing power, but music files and mixing music, you're dealing with quite small files, unless you are dealing with like WAVs. Most people DJ off of MP3s. So, to be quite honest, the, the base model MacBook Pros or even the MacBook Airs now are, are probably going to be sufficient for you. I think when this laptop dies, because I upgrade my laptop every five, six years, I will probably look at the MacBook Air. As long as it's got a terabyte or two of storage, then I don't really care because like for mixing two tracks together, you just don't need a whole lot of power. Like, well, you don't, certainly back in the day, you needed like a really good spec laptop, but now things have advanced so much. I just don't think you need like loads of power in order to DJ because it is just audio files you're managing. Don't get me wrong, if you're doing lights and all the rest of it, then you're probably gonna need more, but I think the base model is, uh, is good enough. I also have my MacBook Pro charger, which is the MagSafe thing. I probably will look at getting a, a spare charger at some point because this has been battered a little bit. 
Um, this cable is like the rope effect one, which is far better than like the old style cable. It, it seems a bit more rugged, but um, it's in better days. So I might look at getting a spare one there. And then some other non-DJ type accessories I take. A pack of tissues, really not that exciting. Some painkillers in case I get like a headache randomly and a fragrance. Always good to smell good at your DJ gigs. And I don't have them with me now. I always take a pack of mints or a pack of chewing gum with me as well. That is my DJ bag 2024. Hope that you have liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will see you next time.